episode 60, folks, with Jackson Winks, Michael Lubomov, the Road Warrior, Jonathan Goulet, and Tiger King, Saf Safari. Let's do it. Hello, 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 folks. Welcome to episode 60 of Fight League Atlantic and No Name Podcast. Evan English, how are you, man? Good, how are you? Not bad, not bad. Beautiful I like Monday. The new, I like the new intro. It's, uh, it's killer. Looks, looks, looks good. really, really good. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my boy out there who did a great job. Um, but yeah, it, it looks good. Uh, things are coming along here. Beautiful sunny day out here. And uh, yeah, no complaints. Thanks to our sponsors. And uh, thanks to everybody out there working on the front line, keeping everybody safe, of course, and uh, doing their thing, including your wife, Mr. English. Absolutely. Yeah. Still grinding. We're doing good though. So yeah, that's right. Well, let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, we have a fantastic lineup of an episode tonight, folks. Uh, we'd like to bring them, bring them big, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, three people, two people involved in the MMA industry. Uh, the first one, obviously, is a he's a very big name. He's uh, the general manager down there. He's a coach, uh, Jiu Jitsu Black Belt uh, at Jackson Wink. Uh, they call him the Mad Russian. Uh, he's a really sweetheart of a guy and a really, really talented uh, athlete. He's very close to you know John Jones and and the rest of them down there at uh, Jackson Week in in New Mexico. Um, so he's been kind enough to join us. Uh, so I guess without further ado, let's bring him in, Michael Lubinoff. How are you, sir? How are you? Awesome. Thank. Hey, Michael. Thank you. I hope I didn't butcher your name, man. Oh, it's good, man. Trust me. You're good. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Eh? Yeah, I guess you were. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, I, I got to ask you, man, uh, you, I've seen in other interviews you've done, you know, like you, you came to Russia from Russia over here. Um, you know, do you look at it now with everything that's kind of going on with the world, especially in the United States? Are you looking at it like what, like what side of the fence are you kind of on? Well, man, it's hard to, uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, I just need to live my life like I used to live. Man. You know? yeah. like it's been, it's been put on pause for a lot of people, man. And it's pretty frustrating because it just changed the way we live, right? Even though it's for a short amount of time, but just the fact that there's no end in sight, it's pretty scary to a certain extent, you know? Um, yeah. Just uh, with people being people and needing certain things and we need to live with families and things like that. And every business been kind of, put on pause, you know, and there's a huge, uh, huge political thing going on too, man, if you look at it, with yeah. the government fighting for keeping it open, keeping it closed, and, and uh, you know, pretend that we're trying to save our lives while everything else is drowning into crap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's what, uh, um, you know, like, like, I don't know, man, it's a just crazy world we're living in, like, it's something I did not expect. <laughs> To yeah. Because first it just it just literally happened overnight, and then you're like, okay, one week I'm here, you know, two yeah. weeks, three week, and, and they keep extending and extending, and boom, two months, and then it's like, you know, a bunch of states already opened up, and we're sitting here, you know, still closed. So it's, uh, yeah, it's scary, frustrating for everyone. So you can see a lot of a lot of athletes who are suffering. Yeah. Well, well, that's it. You know, you're, you know, you deal with both sides of it. I guess you have some amateur athletes who, who are there do a class and stuff, but you know, a ton, a ton of pro fighters who depend on this living, man. Like, you know, it's, and you yourself, you're the manager of this facility, right? Like, so anybody who's not aware, uh, Michael Lubinoff down from uh, Jackson Winkle, John down in uh, New Mexico. So yeah, just kind of, I guess, I don't know, fuck, how, how anyone's going to come out of this, to be honest, man. This is like the building where we, we have uh, over 30,000 square feet for training facility, man. We yeah. I was about 50, 60 people here, man. This place is huge. Yeah. And so, and uh, it's like the type of gym, like it's like the place that never sleeps. You know, there's always people training and always people arrive and moving in. It's an international camp. So it's, and it's just everything just like, boom, stop. Like, yeah. You know, I opened this facility with Coach Wink like five years ago, you know, and it's like, it's, it's, it's been crazy, man. We've been on a huge rise, you know, and just for, for everything to stop like this is. So do you have uh, any part of the gym open currently or is it uh, totally shut down or is there? No, well, people are still living here because we also have uh, Dr. Bo Hightower. Mm -hmm. a famous doctor that uh, he's an essential business apparently, you know, and they see, he's still seeing people. So yeah. plus whatever fighters live here, they're still living, you know, people are training on their own, you know, but we don't, 
we don't have any official classes, obviously, so no one knew is arriving, right? So the travel stopped and uh, inquiries. I get I get tons of inquiries. People are like, when are you going to be open? Yeah, I bet. Do this, and I'm like, ask the government, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. It's a but apparently we're supposed to be open June first, so nice. yeah, so we're hoping, hoping, and then it's certain like at a smaller capacity at least, maybe the same like twenty five percent. And um, yeah, I, I know there's some gyms opening up here in BC. There's also another one in, in New Brunswick. I heard tonight is opening up and following the right protocols. They're doing the right things, I guess that they're that they're supposed to. But it's you know like six feet apart with a grappling dummy and masks on and like. It's fucking crazy, man, to me. Like, yeah, like the, the old this one works too. Put the put the hand over the mask too. You know? <laughs> said I said uh, that I, I guess somebody wrote to me like I guess take take take, uh, take leg locks away. You know, these are twenty five percent. We can deal with that, but <laughs> yeah. I was like, give us Hamzat suit or something, man. Like, like start, yeah. you know, but I don't know. I got. I got to ask you. You got a kid down there who who came up for an event we did uh, the, probably in 2017. Andrew Tennyson. Oh yeah. Man, that kid is a riot. I love him. He's, good. He's our coach. We made him coach. He's actually oh, nice. Yeah, he runs some uh, 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 basic classes for like amateur fighters, like get them more like into jujitsu and stuff. You know, like Andrew, man. He's supposed to be in UFC, man. Like he. Yeah. Uh, the only loss he has uh, against that Corey Sanhagen or whatever the ones mm -hmm. fighting, uh, um, I forgot what they just scheduled them and they came. Uh, who is he fighting? Uh, Cody Cody Garbrandt? No, some of his big name, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah, but that's the only Andrew's loss, and he went into decision with that guy, and that guy is like the top guy you've seen now. So like mm -hmm. that level, you know. So just but he wants to fight in Japan for some reason, so he's just kind of like holding off on the UFC yet. But mm. he wanted to, he really could be there. I know that. For sure. Interesting, interesting. Well, what got you into martial arts? Like, what what was your kind of foray? Like, a lot of I kind of know the story a little bit. Obviously, hockey was kind of something for you, and then and then you transitioned into martial arts. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a fan of the sport. Obviously, you know, and I always kind of it's kind of funny for me because it just happened like a dream come true. You know, yeah. be, uh, the right place at the right time. Yeah. So, so I see, like, you try and get into the, you know, the podcast. You are covering sport, enjoying the sport. Same thing with me, man. Like, I've done a lot of media too prior, but like, I've been training. Uh, I grew up in Russia, obviously, so I trained some sambo and judo back in the day, you know. And then kind of, when I came to the United States, I played hockey, um, and then trained just a little bit martial arts. But I've always followed the sport, you know. And then uh, when I moved to New York, I ended up working with like Russian management team. The original team that brought Habib. Habib cool. Nice. So I worked with Habib in the beginning. I've done like documentaries of him, like video blogs. It's like when, when they're like, actually, sometimes say that I created the embedded series because <laughs> back, then, back then they allowed cameras backstage, but no one really was filming anything. So it was like whatever. But uh, with the rise of Habib and everything, you know, with the management team, we get like a lot of requests to see mm -hmm. our backstage and stuff so and uh, when i courted him for like pat healy fight everything i think it was his six uc fight i took a camera backstage and i filmed like a seven series of like all cool stuff is happening behind the stage behind the behind the stage and and uh, once we released it it's like it's got so many views and cool and, and requests for more stuff and blah 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 so and then out of nowhere, you see just stops cameras backstage and comes out with like embedded series. So, <laughs> of um, course, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So whenever embedded guys come to the uh, come come here to the gym, I would say, guys, gr grand grandmaster of, uh, of 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 video blogs, man. That's it. <laughs> you, jobs, man. you should have my poster like in the office embedded. Like, thank you, Misha. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That's right in the credits. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's a cool that's story. That's cool, though. I think yeah. fans like to see that, right? And that's probably a, a lot, well, with the rise of his star, obviously. But I think just seeing that backstage and access and, uh, you know, even if it's just what they prepare, how they prepare backstage or what goes on. It was like his, uh, one part was like where uh, I remember Bert Watson, Watson, right? The one who was yeah. like on screen and all those things. Like where Habib and he made it bad because Habib was trying to wear, make him wear a hat. And he was like, there's no way a black man wearing this white thing, you know. <laughs> that whole thing. And then, yeah, yeah, it must be 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, and then and then so and they made the bet where Habib said if Habib wins the fight, Pat Healy he'll he'll put it on, you know. There's like a video of us chasing him down the hall because he was refusing to put it on <laughs> so down the hall, like trying to put the head on it. So like things like that, you know, and people like love that stuff. Yeah, it's it's very yeah. true. People do, man, because like it's it's hard. Like, how many people can actually relate to a UFC fighter for real? You know, like I do jujitsu. I'm a brown belt in jujitsu, but I can't fucking relate to a UFC fighter. I can't relate to a, a fighter on the local level. I, you know, I can relate to a jujitsu guy, but for a regular person to see like Habib walk into a restaurant or do something, they're like, oh, I was at that restaurant before. Or it brings somewhat of a. And the MMA is so small and connected to the community. And what's cool about it too, like when you have like. When you're walking down the street or you're like in the hotel, all the fans like jumping on Habib, like can't get signatures. Like when they're cutting weight, when Habib is like drained and literally dead. Yeah. You know, we're trying to put him in the sauna and stuff. Like back then, no one saw saw that before, you know? Yeah. Oh, so it was like, it, it became so popular. And then like this video blog started coming out nonstop. So I kind of proud of it that we kind of started that whole thing. Because Habib was like the biggest, biggest name, right? They're coming out of mm -hmm. Russia at that point, you know, like. Boom, one fight, two fight, three, boom, five, six, six fights. You know, so he kept winning, winning, winning. So mm -hmm. okay, popularity was coming up. So it kind of happened all at the right time. And obviously, as you, as I was talking about it, I was traveling a lot with the management team, you know what I'm saying? So, and I traveled to many different camps. So that's one of the camps I came with one of the five players. And that was Adlan Amagov, Rustam Hadilov, you know the names, right? Mm -hmm. the Russian guys, you know? And then, and then I'll help them get ready for fights and translate, help do it certain thing did a lot of media with them and then i just once again and the other gym they used to be on the other side of town that's when they where they blew up like russia they have a some beer drink, they to go up there, probably won't, you know but because of the popularity of that gym and uh, greg jackson's name coach link's name yeah you know, fighters from all over the seas would try and get here you know but they had a hard time finding places to stay the uh, dorm, huh? dorms and stuff like that you know so that's when they're like okay well, i think we've outgrown this place you know we're very popular so um let's let's big build a bigger facility and that's how um the coach wink needed a new general manager at the time and uh i had a lot of experience in, in business and i ran like uh car dealerships and uh, mm -hmm. uh centers and i trained with all the guys and i was in big to grappling and sambo and all that stuff so kind of everything fell into place you know? yeah. and then here i am you know five years later we had a lockdown damn <laughs> yeah yeah but a cool story nonetheless though like you say a dream job but it, it just goes to show perseverance eh? like you just you're dream, man. I, you know like i knew like if, if i was younger i would compete obviously but because of the way it happened i came to america i was by myself at 15 years of age like i had no guidance i was like lost you know i went to school this wow. morning, up new york so it's like i have no guidance i had no like someone to put me on the right track you know no family whatever so but i always felt like meant for something bigger you know so something to do something much more interesting mm -hmm. i'm like we're all done like crazy shit jobs right yeah so it's like and i believe like don't stop on you know something that you're not happy with there's always like you said perseverance chase your freaking dreams you don't know joe rogan did not become fucking joe rogan overnight right like, yeah dream right now he's hundred million dollars for fucking spotify contract right so like unreal who it's surreal right like I chased my dream. I wanted to be in the business. I found myself in the business. And I keep saying, like, any one of you or anyone, if you're really into it, look how many jobs you see created for people. Like, yeah. started from Ariel Shalwani, man. He was just like, <laughs> the regular door, like, freaking, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like in the sport, counter from day one. And now he's on ESPN. Like, like, with the rise of the sport, a lot of people got a lot of opportunities. And that's why, you know, we should be grateful for this sport and for tree fighters in a way. And I'm saying not like a bunch of freaking idiots sitting online talking shit about yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, like, oh, I, that's such a bullshit, like, whole thing. Different podcast altogether on how much these guys and girls get paid. It, yeah. it, you know, I'm a promoter here. We own a little local promotion here in, in Nova Scotia, Canada. And, you know, it's it's a different ball game altogether, but man it's these people are putting you know you know the game right like you're there you're on the front lines of this whole thing right it's it's like and all the amount of hate fighters get for no reason it's like especially with social media it's like it's not good and it's bad you know so it's like kind of it's a necessary evil like you need it because if it wasn't for that no one knew about you you know 
but then you just have to use it wisely, you know, to a certain extent. Uh, yeah, it's, have it's, a purpose, a good purpose, you know. Yeah, it's it's weird. More people don't have managers like like people to run their social media, like like you, what, like to run their social media for them. Some do, some don't, but it just just. You know, some people, like I said, for some people, it's whatever, whatever social media gives them. Some people, yeah, you to use it in their own way per se. Like let's say, I call the commenter, right? Or like some guys that like to, yeah, that particular way, like to talk shit. <laughs> you know, it just makes you money. Kind of understand it, you know. And then I don't know. It's a deep subject, right? I mean, we can yeah. get deep into it. But I'm just saying, like, like words. Hateful words, they hurt, right? So, so, yeah, to me, like it's crossing the line. Uh, that's not the way I kind. I, I like, I like the respect the martial artist kind of way, you know. But me too. Everybody gets part of the. It is part of the game, but uh, I mean, go to the extreme, like you know, too far where they, you know, bring topics into it that don't need to be brought into it. But uh, you know, or, or certain words or whatever. But yeah. It's very yeah. subject. It is. Uh, yeah, it is. You you still following yeah, hockey? Absolutely. Um, eh, not to be sure. No, not really. No. Yeah, okay. was, like my favorite fighters are kind of like stop. Not fighters, the hockey players. Kind of. Like, I was a big fan of Detroit Red Wings when nice. they had the whole lineup. Like the first lineup was all the Russians. Like you know, <laughs> Fedorov. Yeah, Fedorov. Yeah, I think that's when they won. Like when they had that accident. You remember when they won? Like yeah. Like, yeah. The, they were in a limo and they got into that bad accident and Constantino became paralyzed, remember? That's right. Yeah. That's what that's like the golden era for me was like when I watched them. Like, they were a definitely dominant team at that yeah. point too. Like yeah, that kind of came up because what happened to me when I came to New York, I played well, that first year I lived in Wisconsin and I played a year over there. And, uh, so all my gear that I had when I came to New York, uh somebody stole it and I was at the skyline. <laughs> So that was the end of my uh, hockey career. Huh? So, welcome to New York. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, really brought, really. what brought you to New York originally when you came from uh, Russia? Well, it's like just, you know, I had some family members there and I couldn't stay in Wisconsin anymore. So I know a new opportunity, more opportunities were in New York, obviously. But it's like, yeah, I've been on my own pretty much for a long time there too so it's kind of like just just new york yeah you because know, it's like everyone goes to new york right? yeah it's a yeah. beautiful place it's the russian community at the, you know um yeah so it's either east coast west coast you gotta be kind of in big city you know to get some bigger opportunities but not that i got any actually look i got my biggest opportunity actually in albuquerque new mexico no, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah you just never know where those opportunities will come from <laughs> Chasing, you know, some people are okay, like staying in one spot, but I traveled all my life from one spot to another, been all over Europe, you know, traveled different places and around the world. So I was in the Navy here, actually. Um, oh, really? Uh, yeah, thank you for your service, sir. Yes. Yeah, so I did that here. You know, just always followed the sport, so the sport, the sport of MMA and grappling, jiu jitsu. And, um, who do you train under? What's uh, what's your lineage? So we're it's it's an interesting thing. We're under, I guess you. So my coach, I guess he would be under a guy named uh, Peter Martel, who's under Henzo. Henzo. Okay. So yeah, I guess Henzo. Yeah, my my blue belt under Henzo Gracie system. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. I traveled a lot, so all my belts are from like different systems. But my black belt, black belt I got here was in New Mexico from uh, Gracie Barra. Nice. Yeah. We have four huge schools here, and uh, uh, Roberto Alencar, uh, Tusa, his nickname Tusa, he is John Jones's coach, and like we cross through. It's like our extended family, you know, we train exclusively on the Gracie Bar. So a lot of their high level coaches, grapplers, they are our coaches as well. Nice. So, like the high level coaches there, they teach John Jones how to hold, show worse, you know, so like they do a lot of that. And I actually but was fortunate enough to get my black belt from. Uh, Carlos Gracie Jr. The son, I was, mm. I always, like to me, I said, that was like probably the surrealist moment ever. Because like, I always thought I'm going to get it. I knew I was going to get a black belt because I'm a lot of sport, you know, like you're yeah. in, right? Like you're going for it, right? So, yeah. All the way around. 
And uh, usually, so you get it from a black belt, your coach, right? Whatever, you know, it could be big name, smaller name, whatever. But I got it. I don't know how it happened, but I got it. I was Gracie Jr., who is the son of the founder of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, that's yeah. badass. The son of, like, of a founder of Jiu Jitsu, because it's Carlos Grace and Hilo Grace. They yeah. brought us to America, right? They found the sport. And his son, the owner of Gracie Barra, Thousand Schools, the owner of IBJJF, he presented me with a black belt. Wow. wow. So I was standing there, like, shaking, man. Like, <laughs> Where was that at? You know, it was, uh, it was in San Diego. They do like every two years, do like summits. Mm -hmm. All the summit where like all the top guys, like thousands of people, all fly in into one big, um, big area. They do like a huge conference, you know. Oh, nice. Uh, um, no social distance, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look at you know what's now. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to like get back to normal, but either way. And then yeah, so they do the summits. They do like. It's like three day event. They do like in their house, uh, in their tournament between Gracie Baja, you know? Nice. And, uh, they do those one day, and then they do like a lot of like classes for, because it's a huge affiliation, you know? So, a lot mm. of all over the world. It's, is it the biggest one in the world? It's, got, it's damn close. Crazy, no, it's the biggest. Gracie yeah. Baja. There's no one bigger than Gracie Baja. It's thousand schools. Who has thousands of schools? Ridiculous. They're like almost in every city around the world. Yeah, they really are. Four of them are here. So. Shout out to uh, James Harnish. He's actually a guy from up here in Nova Scotia. He's a guy that uh, he bleeds that red, let me tell you, that red shield. And he's super dedicated. And he moved from here uh, in Nova Scotia. He moved out to Alberta. He trains with uh, in Edmonton uh, with Ryan. I uh, can't remember his last name. Anyway, he's a black belt there and owns Gracie Edmonton. And uh, he just he, he, he followed his dream. No, because I met somebody there. I forgot their name too, but I met I met somebody from uh, Edmonton. Okay. And I think it's uh, they actually came to Albuquerque trained with Tusa over here too, because Tusa is like one of the heads, like really mm -hmm. head. So he's uh, one of the biggest guys in Grace and Bottom system too. So a lot of guys from all over the world also from Grace and Bottom come to train with him too. So it's like six time mm -hmm. world champion. <laughs> crazy wow what's, what what's a uh, like a lot of people it's funny you know i'm sure people ask you this all the time but i, I know you got to go i don't want to hold you up too long uh john his grappling he it's he never gets to ever show it or really ever grapple with anybody yeah man i know i fell in love with striking man you get this uh, get this <laughs> like like fedor or like a lot of like older guys or the guys that have been in the game for a long time even though the background like when, when you see Fyodor Emelianenko fight, right, he don't take no one down. He just stand in and banging with people. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not there. Like, I love grappling, man. If anything, no matter how old I am, I'll still be trying to pull people down and choke them out, submit them or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, a lot of stuff, some guys are still still with it. Some, some are not. It's just some kind of preference, you know. Maybe, like, it's easier to stand in strike for a lot of guys especially if you do the cable a lot of because john striking is insane he has yeah. each he has this you know i don't know we've talked about it too like i told him like maybe we gotta get back to like wrestling and more and mm -hmm. yeah he comes from a wrestling background right like like i said some people they've been doing it so long right mm -hmm. like you've been on top so maybe it just has some kind of toll yeah. the what what is he a is he a blue belt or purple belt or some he's a purple belt on the two so, yeah he just uh you know they do private session it's not like he goes to like crazy classes and stuff but they do a lot of private with tusa and work together nice. and, and stuff like that but um you know like he works for it you know i'm yeah. saying definitely black belt skill wise but like yeah we gi you know if you give gi, gi, gi practitioner you know you gotta put in some time yeah so some 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 guys promote the fighters, UFC fighters, but we believe in our two civilians. They got to at least put in some work into it. Yeah, it's a, that's a whole again going. That's a whole different podcast altogether for sure. That whole grading belt thing, man. It's uh, yeah. It's, you said you know you know Mitch Mitch Clark. Yeah, he. So we used to do shows up here uh, before I get into like promoting MMA. We used to do Evan and I and other people. We used Adam. Buddies of mine used to do a thing called Submission Series Pro, and it was like it was like Fight to Win or you know yeah, Metamoris. It went right with Diego Sanchez, right? You, you got it, yeah, yeah. So they came up here. We used to do that, and that's how I met Mitch, and he he competed. 
like you yeah. know, something open oh that's freaking awesome yeah it was cool man it was a lot of fun but i just for me not, it, it wasn't a challenge anymore i wanted to challenge and i wanted to try mma right and you know that was the eventual goal and, and fell in love with it man you know i'm a huge fan and but I, I think you know i think too mma needs some more real promoters like actual fucking people who aren't shady you know who are there for the right reason who train you know and there are lots now like there's you know there are people in in the promotion leads but yeah. you know yeah man i mean as i said i keep i keep bringing it up on every and never everyone i ever talked to any type of interview you know like we are still in the infancy of the sport you know like yeah. about boxing right i mean it's been out for hundreds of years right that's why we are the purses that the fighters again like 50 million 10 million you know, yeah right crazy money right to get from boxers but like the fighters that we're seeing right now like john jones like they say yeah he's pretty much like muhammad ali of that era right like you get like all these guys that are coming up now you know like fighting now the big names they are like the rocky marcianos and like joe Lewis is of the sport like 50 60 100 years from now yeah this is like the, the grandfathers of the sport right the guys that started the whole thing right because think about it, ufc has happened within our time like, yeah in my town it was nice that was like yeah, well, it was 1996, 90, you know, 19, whatever. Like, he started 1993. Greg Jackson actually was already operating in 1992. So this, the, the rise of his, the gym of his notoriety happened with the rise of UFC too, you know? So it's like, we are still within that, that yeah. age of the sport. If you think of what's going to happen 50, 60 years from now, I think the money will be there. Because people love combat sports. It's all, always going to be out there. Actually, I think more boxing is going to fade away. This is going to be the next, which is already boxing fade. Yeah. I mean, how many big names out there? You like, you only know like two, three heavyweights and Miguel Cotto. That's it. I don't freaking know. Anymore. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But like then, ten years from now, ago, I, go, I freaking followed the boxing like crazy. I knew everyone, every division, and yeah. all the fighters, and watched it on every on ESPN every night, whatever. Now, just like it's all in the man. Is that because of the bullshit behind boxing? Is that what you lost interest, or now just because you're so involved in MMA? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah well, well, both. I mean, no, bullshit or not, like, we're not, we're not in it, so we don't know really what type of bullshit that is. It just, it just didn't become exciting as much. You know, I'm saying because once again, like, for me, also I watched because Klitschko brothers were up there, you know, and like I was a big fan of Klitschko, so I watched a lot of them, and then when they kind of disappeared disappeared a lot of all the like you know, Lomachenko is great so like I'll watch his fights or whatever but even that like who who know like within outside of the circle like no one knows you know before everyone followed the sport actually now I'm just now yeah I'm any questions there Ev? oh that's good it's a good chat yeah it's, it's interesting it's, yeah it is to, to for me like because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people talk with the fighters, the coaches. You're obviously a coach too, but to you're running the facility too. Like, so that's what's kind of interesting to me is not like you see all goddamn egos from every side. It's hard, man. That's a hard job. I mean, it's a fun job. I mean, every job has ups and downs. Yeah, but it's uh, it's an exciting job. And so I always ask Coach Wayne, "Hey, how are you doing?" He's like, "Living the dream," you know. So it's like it's it's always new goals always new fights always new barriers to break always new things to learn you know like it's a, such an exciting thing because there's always new people to write new people to meet new interviews to do it's like yeah. it's it's just exciting exciting like see like you're enjoying this too you know and the more you do it the deeper you get into it it's like you want to have an exciting life excited right like you don't want to have the nine to five and just boring you hate everything you know so you pursue, you pursue what you like, what you enjoy, what, what motivates you, what gets you up every every morning, you know, like I don't compete anymore, but like I get up and I go train every single day because I love it. Like yeah. I, I grapple every day as much as I can, as much as my body allows me to, you know, so, and then when I don't have it, I feel sad, I feel depressed, <laughs> I feel crazy, you know, like it's something, yeah. it's, our, it's our air. So, and then being part of it is just... It just, it just, it's amazing, you know. Egos or not, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, because the, the, any type of type, it's a violent sport, right? That's yeah, right. that's yeah. So, um, a lot of these fighters that always get in trouble, I mean, let's say John Jones included, right? 
Sure. So I always get talked on this and that. And, you know, people are people, man. It's just like you, we are in a violent, violent sport. You yeah. Know, just to put an elbow through somebody's skull. You think you're going to be like a normal freaking human being? <laughs> yeah, I always say that too, man. It's like it's a different breed of people in the sport. Just you think a normal human being to waking up and this is like your job. Yeah. To break someone's face. Yeah. And, and you think you're not going to have some kind of issues. Yes, there's outstanding people out there that are very normal. And at least on camera, I would per se, like George Tampier or whatever. Like, we don't know what type of demons he is dealing with. Sure. Yeah. So have to escape all the bullshit. But John is just very, like, out there. So, you know what I'm saying? And then there's a lot of, it's a type of, people forget, like, Mike Tyson, man, during his prime. Jesus Christ, man. Freaking said he's going to eat children. I mean, you know, yeah, man. he was, uh... you know, man, yeah. Like, people, people forget, like, because, but then there was no social media, you know? You, like, read the newspaper, you were saw it on TV, you discussed it, you discuss this problem within your own little circle of people or whatever, right? Or strangers that you met, whatever. But now people get this, this, yeah, everything. But that's you know, it's funny. I, I always say this quote. It's it's like I don't know who it was, and I heard this professional athlete say, like, I wish I could go to your place of work and make fun of you. Like, so say you were bagging groceries, and it was like, you're stupid, man. Bag those quicker. Like, hurry up. You know, like how people talk to professional athletes, and it's true. Like. He's just John Jones is just a fucking dude. Get up, you punk! You know, the guy, yeah. you know they wrestle, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know, with the guy on top of you, man, that wrestled for thirty years. Nah. Yeah, yeah. So give 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 any any kid, you know, a lot of talent and a lot of money and a, and a couple of UFC titles and see how they see how they handle themselves, right? Like, whatever, man. People can shit on everything they like, but you know, it's it's life, man. Everybody makes mistakes, so. People, yeah. what's funny is that it's just like not to offend anyone, but like you look and you look at their profile, and you know, the people that write and all that crap, and you're like, Gee, yeah. <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, saying these things, you know, yeah, I don't think they would say the same if that person showed up at their front door. I assume the conversation <laughs> would be different, you know, <laughs> yeah, confidence is an amazing thing, it really is, huh? It's, 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 a scary. it's actually something like with profile and stuff, it's. Like you can't get affected by this. I mean, I'm sure it hurts when you get like an out, you know, like outpour of like this hate coming your way. But yeah, I think it's just gonna make you stronger if you find a way to deal with it and kind of block it out. Because I fall into this trap too. Because any type of like, like we as a gym, right? We have thousands, thousands of athletes that come through from all over the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. And for whatever reason is like whenever the athlete gets in trouble or something happens, like it's our fault. You know, yeah, like, uh, we're human it's, beings. Yeah, it's like it's for some reason our fault. Like we have a control of <laughs> all these people that are just doing whatever the hell they want outside, and it's our fault that let's say somebody gets in trouble. This is so get so, and I run the social media, so I get I get all those messages, right? Mm. Of hate and it's you this, you that, and so much nonsense. that just when you read through it, you automatically like like boil, you know, to red hot, like ah. You know, <laughs> and then you, yeah, lose rationale. Like you, you lose your mind. You won't just start fighting with these people. But I yeah. don't find find a way to just like delete, yeah. block, delete, block, delete, block. Yeah, I just can't even fathom writing like the the main account for like the gym and be like, John Jones sucks. Like who who does that? Like who are these fucking people? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Look at the comments on any kind of post or any type of thing. And most of the time, it's just people that never train in their lives and look yeah. like like a normal. Normal people, you know, the ones that have been in sport, have done things and stuff like that. They they won't do it because the sport does. Hit. I mean, for for promotional purposes, obviously, people talk sure. about Twitter and all this, you know. So fighters, yeah. Yeah. But like the people that live their lives, just sitting on there, just like constantly talking shit and discussing things and arguing online. And, yeah. And, you know, like I can't do it. No, yeah, it's a never ending battle. There's always going to be those people. I think it's a, yeah, never going to win, right? So you just got to learn to ignore it or well, move you know, on. I wish there was some kind of like accountability for this. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was thinking yeah. that, like, like, if you register on Facebook, it's got to be your freaking address on there. <laughs> 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 
So like, like it's yeah. okay. You want to use this? Like your address, your phone number, your picture, man. So, yeah. so, so you can't hide behind this shit. Then, yeah. like, There's a lot of people that used to do. They would show up to the gym. But I don't see that happening too much anymore either. Yeah, because they said, because of those videos, they saw what happened to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The worst one I think I saw. Charlie, Charlie Zelenoff, I don't know his name. Oh, fuck. I, I actually, it's hilarious you mentioned Charlie Zelenoff. I tweeted him the other day for fun. I didn't, I didn't, like just basically for fun, shits and giggles to see if he'd respond. And I was, he, he posted something about his jabs. I was like, I'd probably beat you with no arms. And he just kind of went off on a tangent. <laughs> He loves it, man. Yeah, look at man. Like you give him a little bit of ammunition, and I notice like whenever yeah. you get, like all these messages and stuff, and one second, one, if you respond even for a second, boom, it, it opens up this kind of worm that he's just gonna jump on it. You know, it's like yeah. UFC posted, UFC yesterday posted. So who is the goat? You know, for the whole McGregor thing. I don't know if you saw that that um, UFC belt. Oh and, yes, yes. No, and, oh. and, I, and, then, and I, I wrote from the gym. Uh, uh, what did I wrote? Hold on. Actually, I wrote something about like, well, John Jones was pound for pound number one on your website for like last 10 years. So that kind of solves the cover of the problem, right? So like on your website, John Jones has been pound for pound for like a decade. Ever. Yeah. Just Why like, would he change? That's a message, a hundreds of messages of people just talking so much crap to me, you know, like to the gym. And all I just said is like, hey, it's, it's Fact. John Jones been <laughs> it's number one pound for pound, number one. Yeah. And I, I usually do it just, just to see like their reaction. I didn't say anything bad. It's false, man. It's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, All right, buddy. Well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, uh, Michael Lubinoff, folks, Misha, I, I got to thank you so much for joining us, man. Hopefully we can get you on again and maybe yeah. talk about break down some fights or, or something like that. And, uh, but uh, anybody, obviously, anybody can reach out to the Jackson Jackson Wink account, and you know if they if they want to go down there and train and pay some fees or anything like that, I assume. Yeah, well, the best way to uh, we have screening uh, screening form for because it's an invite only gym type of thing. You can yeah. just do like you have to have some kind of experience to join. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you go to our website jacksonwing.com. Has a lot of information, and you fill out like the new fighter inquiry. You put all the information in there, you know, and then I get the email and then I start communication with you and stuff. It's pretty easy. A lot of people think it's kind of hard, but we yeah. have a lot of Canadians here from all over the place. Nice. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, every country you can think of, man. I mean, it's some places that I've never heard of, you know. So, yeah. Uh, it's very go easy. Down, go down and get your licks. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much for joining us, dude. Yeah. We really appreciate it up here in Nova Scotia. Yeah, if you want to do more podcasts, I can refer some fighters to you too if you want to talk some other time. Cool. Awesome, man. I appreciate that very much. All right. Be Thank well. You. Lots of love to you guys down there. Stay training, man. All right, man. Chat soon. There you go. Awesome. That was very cool. Great guy. Yeah, Evan. very cool. Yeah. It's, it's neat to talk to these people who, who have tons of experience, you know, and they're de what they're dealing with in the sport right now. And it's interesting. Yeah. You know, down to earth guy, he's got a lot of knowledge, sees a lot of stuff, I'm sure. And, you know, it's just because, uh, like, you know, that gym is like a UFC card on its own, right? It's uh, there's yeah. a lot of big names in there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of champions for sure. It's, yeah, there's a lot of humble people in the sport. Obviously, you have you have other many styles of in personalities of people, but uh, he's very humble, which is nice to see. And uh, came highly referred from Mitch Clark who's another humble guy out there. He's a super sweetheart. So uh, we're just waiting, uh, folks, for Jonathan Goulet, the Roar Warrior, uh, the nine-time UFC veteran from Montreal, Canada. Um, long story short, Jonathan, what he's he's actually competed on our shows as well back, uh, I don't know what time, uh, what year it was. It might have been 2017, something like that. Uh, but basically, he what did he do? He came compete against Joel Jacquard, and now I believe he's walking across Canada, 4,000 kilometers across Canada, uh, to raise awareness about depression. Yeah. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Uh, is he walking right now? Well, he was walking, uh, but now he is not. I guess he's kind of locked up right now, and that's what we're kind of waiting to talk to him about. Stuck in, stuck in Winnipeg or something. In a different place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Northern Manitoba. This is why we need you, Danny Harvey. I can't run the show at the same time, my man. You're too good. You're too yeah. good. Yeah. 
So, I don't got the skills like Danny, so I'm just kind of this lump here. Yeah, I'm just jealous here, watching, looking over here at Chelsea. She's relaxing the couch and quite jealous here, folks. Quite jealous. That's anyway, I don't know if Jonathan Goulet is going to make it on here or not, folks. Dun, dun, dun. But Saf Safri is on his way. Uh, about 20 minutes from now. So if we can get Mr. Goulet on, that'll be great. If not, uh, we'll come back here in a few minutes and uh, continue on with Saf. Evan, so uh, I got to ask you, man, drones. You have a drone. I do. Uh, did you have to get a license for that? You do, yeah. It's, uh, it's not oh. very difficult. I mean, it's like a online oh. course, I guess you'd say, test. An so, online course? Yeah, you just basically got to do a bunch of questions. Like some of them are a little difficult. Like they kind of get into like weird weather patterns, like kind of like questions you would take if you're doing like ground school and like for an actual plane. If this is like a remote control kind of toy, I guess. So it's a little bizarre, but that's all they make you do. Just more so just to make sure, you know, like not, to, you know, put it in situations that you shouldn't and stuff like that. But yeah. There is like an advanced one, I guess you can get if you do it professionally. Then you uh, need to do like an actual flight test and stuff. And yeah, that's scary. Uh, like if you're doing like professionally, to, like I mean, like I guess if you're like recording video professionally and stuff like that, oh, right? Or, there's the Road Warrior. Sorry to cut you off. I love your. your drone. All right, we'll, we'll get into that drone here in a bit. Uh, the Road Warrior, Jonathan Goulet. How are you, my man? I'm good, and you? Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you again. I'm so sorry. I think I'm I am late a bit. No, you're great. You're handsome. Okay, good. You're looking good. How you <laughs> How's things? Things are good. Really good. I was working on my website. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, we are all uh, inside, stuck inside. So uh, I was looking at the university classes. Maybe, you know, I will start something. So, you know, I, I, I need to... Uh, to uh keep my mind uh you know uh busy yeah yeah that it's it's for anybody who's just joining us this is jonathan goulet uh a ufc veteran uh martial artist lifelong martial artist uh can can we call you a mental health advocate now uh you know yeah for, yeah, yeah. I, I think so <laughs> i think what you're doing is quite admirable you know for uh, i suffer from mental health issues myself a little bit with ptsd and stuff and and i think it's super important you know four thousand kilometers you're walking across the country and obviously it got derailed for what we're dealing with right now. You're going to start it again or? Oh, of course, of course. I just can't wait to be able to walk again. I just, uh, you know, my, uh, my uh, first uh, 200 kilometers were, they, they were like, uh, uh, I would say training. I, you know, <laughs> I knew how I was able to, um, to walk. Of course, I knew what I was able to do with my, uh, my uh my stuff for camping and walking yeah. but it was hard and uh, i've learned a lot so so when i will uh, do it again i will be able to uh to uh to walk longer and uh, it will be more efficient nice. how, ma how many kilometers did you get in uh, before you had to stop uh 200 on 200 total 200 okay. Because uh, you know, it's I was uh, I started uh, in Montreal, and uh, I, I've been walking and sleeping outside. Uh, it was winter. Uh, I started on uh, February 29, and uh, and uh, it was cold. It was cold, but I was uh, I was I was well equipped, and uh, I was having uh, you know at, at the beginning I was having a, a sled with uh, about. Hundred tons uh, of stuff inside, but uh, you know, I, you know, I just um, cleared uh, something. I mean, I mean, uh, I had some things that you know I didn't need, but I was uh, kind of attached to it. Mm. So, so me, that was kind of a, a goal to deliver a message of uh, being able to get rid of of negative things, and uh, j because those negative things. Uh, might um, might not help me to move forward 
so so uh, so that's what I did, and then uh, just before I stopped my, uh, you know, I had um, uh, a backpack, and it was around sixty pounds uh, on it. Uh, that was seventy pounds. Yeah. So so I had to adjust myself all the time, and that was uh, that was fun. Probably. Yeah. Uh... Felt like about 200 pounds oh, yeah, yeah, after but, about and, and, 50 kilometers or so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I lost, I lost uh, a few pounds. of, And, uh, you know, I, I didn't answer your questions. I started in Montreal. Then I had to stop in Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke. Okay. Uh, back, yeah. yeah. That's a long way, though, to walk. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, compared to what I wanted to do, it was, uh, you know, I, right now I will be in Halifax. If I, I, you know, if the COVID nineteen wasn't there, I would be in the hell. And we could be training because the bear. Uh, we could be training. Oh, uh, you know, or, or yes, yes, well, yes, of course. Training is so important for our mental health. It's uh it's that's what I love about jujitsu. Yeah, have you been training a lot before this happened? I know, like when you came out and competed for us. I, I don't know what year that was, Jonathan. Like 2018, maybe or something. You were just really kind of getting back into jujitsu. Uh, have you been yeah. training a lot? Yes. So, um, I, I, uh, I I've been uh, uh, competing. Nice. I, I mean, uh, I pro uh, myself and to Firaz Zabi that I. Uh, I wouldn't compete again until you say yes. So, and for me, that was good because, uh, you know, uh, the last, uh, that was, yeah, that was the last fight I did. And uh, I kind of hurt myself and, uh, and more my, my ego, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm not old at all, but uh, I need to work like it was. And, uh, and, you know, I can't afford to not be able to work. So, so if I have uh, uh, fingers uh, all broken, you know, I, I I did a lot in the competitions, so that's enough for me. And uh, but I, I did train a lot uh, and more teach. Yeah, yeah, you certainly did uh, train and fight a lot. It's hard on the body. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's hard, and now, now I feel like we are doing nothing, all in or uh, or coming in. I mean, I feel, I feel like I am more injured than before, <laughs> so I need to train. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, my body is soft. It's soft always, but now it's really soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, where, my, where? my, to try to talk a lot. What? what? <laughs> It's the beers. Oh yeah, yeah, the beers too. Yeah, I like, I like, I like um, micro brewery beers. So it's a, uh, it's a tasteful, and you know, I taste, you know, I, there's a store beside my place, and and uh, I go, uh, you know, too often. <laughs> <laughs> Daily. <Huh? laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> no, no, not daily, but. <laughs> Every other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, one thing that I love about <laughs> you, man, you know, out of all the years I've been promoting events, uh, you are probably one of the easiest athletes to deal with. Uh, and like most like genuine, just easiest people to deal with too. Is is that something that has always been a focus on you, your career? Like to just kind of, you know, just be nice, you know, and be kind. Uh, when I was in the UFC, I was more like a diva, but uh, I, I mean, I was uh, it was harder to uh, to deal with me. I mean, I was fine with people, yeah. but uh, business wise, it was harder. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's kind of you know maybe it's uh, it happened more after my career when I I, uh, I touched the bottom. Before I was a star, then I became in my head uh, nothing. So, 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 uh, it, uh, because I, I became, I, I touched the bottom, uh, uh, maybe I became a normal human and, uh, uh, you know, 
a, a kind human. I mean, everybody des deserves until they don't. So that's yeah. how I am. Yeah, we're having some uh, some internet issues there, folks. Sorry about that. For anyone who's just joining us again, this is Jonathan Goulet, uh, UFC veteran and mental health advocate. Um, where where did the idea, Evan? Do you have any questions or, or no? You're good. I'll keep firing. I'm I'm good. I'll uh, I'll pipe uh, in. I look at I look at you like the whole uh, the whole experience of like four thousand kilometers. Like that's uh, does that compare in any way to a UFC fight? Uh. No, because it's more like a marathon. You know, a UFC fight. You can finish this in a, in five seconds. You know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a, and and that was eight months and thirteen days of walking. So 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 it's a, it's hard on the physique. It's hard. It's harder on the mental. I mean, uh, you know, I did only 15, 16 days. And mostly I was alone wa walking by myself. So, um, and every time I am in the woods, I don't walk with music on me because I, you know, I, I want to be aware of uh, yeah. animals. I know that was, that was winter, but uh, there's no bears and not where I was, but more I was going to, uh, towards uh, Sherbrooke, uh, more dangerous it was, but still it was, you know, a winter. Maybe there's uh, dogs or what you know, human being uh, with bad intentions. So, yeah. so I I prefer to be aware, and uh, and that's it. So so I I was thinking a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, walking in the woods will do that to you. You know, I yeah. think you know, it's it's which is good. During um, I, I love that. And, uh, during your journey, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. How many how many kilometers is your plan like for a daily like or depends I guess but what's your plan I guess how many kilometers a day would you typically put in? I have put in uh, uh, around three kilometers per hour to do twenty uh, kilometers a day minimum, but mostly wow. I was uh, you know I was walking uh, uh, with my sled uh, and it was freaking hard <laughs> and I was I wasn't completing the 20 kilometers uh, there's only one day that I did it and uh, and uh, I went over uh, and I kind of uh, regret it <laughs> uh, I did 30 kilometers in a day and uh, and uh, yeah that yeah that was uh, that was fucked up <laughs> uh, then then you know it's uh, more it was going, more the snow was melting under my feet. So sometimes I was having a, a snow uh, over my. Uh, but uh, you know I had snowshoes, so I, I you know <laughs> when I was walking I was falling uh, in the snow. Then I was deciding to put to wear my snowshoes and walking with that and my sled. So that was a. Uh, I was, you know, const you know, constant. Uh, I, anyway, I was learning all the time, all the time. That's bad. That's unreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mental toughness, super hard. Yeah, yeah, but you know that. That's. Uh, I have uh, my ego is kind of uh, big, <laughs> so <laughs> I said to a lot of people that I was go going to walk four thousand kilometers. So. Uh, nothing except injuries or, or uh, sickness was going to stop me. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I was repeating that to myself. So I have to, uh, I have one word. So, so I will achieve my goal. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. It, it's, it's, it's a shitty situation that has stopped this whole thing for you. I remember following your posts and you know, like camping in the woods or whatever, it'd be pitch black, and you. I have no idea what you're saying. You're speaking French, but I'd be liking <laughs> it and, and enjoying it anyway. But it was because I knew the story of what you were doing, and I thought it was, it was super inspirational. And it's too bad, but uh, it's it's good to hear that you're going to do it again. One uh, of the worst night I had, I was in the mountains, and uh, 
Uh, I don't always say this uh, in English, but uh, I think that's a herd of coyotes. Mm. Uh, I heard I heard a uh, lot of coyotes howling uh, everywhere. So for me, as long as they were on one side, I was okay. So so once you know you you hear them everywhere around you, you're you know you better climb in the tree or what you know because even if coyotes are small they are a lot so they will they will bite you and maybe you know eat you but you know they prefer a turkey or small animals than humans so that's you know i was kind of afraid but but still telling myself that don't worry <laughs> jesus man yeah no i'm not i'm never doing that with you <laughs> i was i was sleeping with my knife here So I was uh, I was ready, you know. I was, uh, you know, pull it and stab what's whatever was going to bite me. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's it. Scary. Uh, do, you, do you hunt? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I I fish, but I uh, I don't hunt. Why? I don't. I just don't have any weapons, so that's why I don't. Yeah, I, I've never held a gun in my life. Evan, have, Evan, I think he he owns a, a semi-automatic Uzi or something. Okay. I, think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's me because I'm outside. So no, no. How's uh, so? You guys are opening. Well, I know you have to go here. I don't want to hold you up too long. How's uh, how's everything in, in Quebec? Is everything opening up now? Huh? Yeah, everything is opening up, uh, you know, slowly. The, there's a, there's a phases. So, uh, so some, you know, we'll see. We'll see what will happen. Uh, but right now we are all confined, like mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. So, so we'll see. I hope, you know, I will be able to train. But it's in phase five, I think. So uh, we are in phase uh, one or two. Uh, so 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 in phase uh, five they will open the gym, uh, but not you know in phase three they will open the gym, but individual in, individual individual training. In phase uh, five it's supposed to be martial arts and other things. Okay, so phase that's good to hear. That's good because you know I, I I look at it I'm like by phase five is the second wave going to come again? By the time phase y, phase five. Phase five gets here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. You know, I, I you know, they, they, they talk about uh, June and uh, and maybe July uh, mm. for for. I think July or August will be phase five. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, man. So yeah. where um when you start your journey again, where where can uh, fans or people you know follow along with your journey and more importantly uh, maybe donate to your cause uh i have a facebook page and and uh, i have uh, my uh, my web my website uh i'm sorry i have my website page uh it's lrdg.ca uh, and it's slash em for uh, english and that's where you can you can uh, see you know there's a page for donation there's a lot of clothes to buy and uh, mm -hmm. that's what i did yeah that's it that uh, it? yeah that that's uh, what i did uh, uh today it's uh updating my website and so uh, i will have a lot of uh, things to sell on this and it's a uh, it's, you know it's a uh, print on on demand that's that's cool that's a it, it's a print of, on demand so i don't have to uh, buy a, a shitload of uh, of stuff print nice. on, on it so so i will I, i won't spend that much money on on uh, what I, i will have so there's so many things i can wait yeah yeah good question yeah. Evan. very good question well you know one thing uh -huh. I, i wanted to ask you right before you know road warrior Did that, did that come from the wrestlers? Is that just, did you, are you watching? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I never had the, 
the yeah, spikes, the spikes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the road warrior like uh, you know with uh, Mel Gibson was uh, what movie it was it was uh, Mad Max uh, oh, there's yeah. so many things yeah. uh, <laughs> but the road warrior was because uh, you know I was uh, traveling here and there to, to fight uh, and sometimes you know I, I, uh, I even paid my uh, flight tickets to go fight without being paid or whatsoever. So, so one day, uh, uh, Stefan Patry, you know, uh, from TKO, yeah. Yeah. he brought me at that TKO, which was Roll Warriors. And uh, after my win, my first, uh, that was my first fight at 170 against uh, the super talented uh, Jeff Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, you know, Stefan Patry was my manager, so he said, "Hey, the Road Warrior, how are you?" I was like, "Oh, I like it." So, so since then, it's my uh, it's my nickname. Hmm. Interesting. That's a. I was wondering. I don't know if you guys are watching the Dark Side of the Ring uh, on there. No. Uh, it's on Crave TV. Shout out to Jason Eisner here in Halifax. He's the director, but. It's on Crave, and it's about all the wrestlers back in the day, like the Montreal Screwjob and Dino Bravo and all this kind of – do you follow professional wrestling at all? Yes, of course. It's uh, big souvenirs. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's all about that kind of stuff. And, and this – the last one to finish the season off was about the Road Warriors, so that's why I asked you. Yeah, I, I will look for it. Yeah. I, I, I really love that. You know, I, I love what they did with the UFC fighters. I love. Uh, I don't remember the name of the guy. He did some uh, some uh, kind of a documentary with uh, former UFC uh, uh, champions. You know, uh, they they were pride fighters too. So uh, it's uh, Razak, Bobby Razak. Oh yes, Bobby did, Razak. Yeah. Yeah, he did some 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 good things, and I love to watch this. What what they became? What where are the fighters? Sometimes it's it's sad. But other times it's uh, it's uh, it's fun, it's fun, you know. Yeah, it is. It it shows that you guys are people. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like at the yeah. end of the day, you're you're like you're just people, man. Like it's in all walks of life. There's everybody with different talents, and it's cool to to see. I, I I'm almost more fascinated. I don't know about you, Evan, but I'm almost more fascinated with the the psychology of the like you know talent wise. You're an athlete. I get that, but the yeah. psychology behind it, the ups and downs behind the scenes, that to me is so fascinating. That's that's why you know I, yes you know I'm so fascinating with the uh, psychology, and that's why yesterday I was looking at the uh, uh, classes uh, you know di distance uh, classes at university in in psychology. So there's so many things that I, I want to learn. I want to know you know how my uh, my brain work. I, I I did read some some books. I did uh, watch some uh, documentary about about uh, how. It works inside, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you know I, I still need to learn and and maybe have uh, more uh, tricky with because uh, you you know some with with diplomas you know I, you know with that piece of paper that people will see you know okay I, I'm doing things uh, for the good reasons uh, yeah I don't know if you yeah no no that's I don't know true. If it makes sense. No, yeah, it, it does. does. It does. It does. So, uh, sorry, I, I got to ask you, you know, before I know you're uh, one thing that for, for me, before I let you go, um, advice for, for younger fighters who like you, man, you know, who, you know, you were brought into the UFC with these high expectations. You succeeded. You did really well. And then you had these low points, too. Right. But you brought yourself back up. You're, you're a real big role model in the scene. How does a person get through that? Uh, at, at first, just, you know, surround yourself with uh, good people. So, yeah. so, uh, that way, you know, they, you will have uh, people that, uh, want uh, the same thing as you. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then, uh, uh, just, uh, never stop, never quit. And, uh, even after, uh, you know, because sometimes we have, uh, we lose fights. So, so it's normal. Except if you are a GSP, even GSP uh, did the last two fights. So, so, so you, um, yeah, you never quit. Uh, me, my, uh, you know, I had to go through this. But after my career, 
I stopped everything. You remember, you know, I stopped for five, yeah, five years. I did nothing, not even running. So, so that's, yeah, it's kind of why, you know, I dropped and I, I uh, almost killed myself. Mm. So, so whoever trained hard, never, never stop. Just if you're sick of being at one place, just change the gym, you know, and, and find other people with, uh, you know, who you can train. It's, uh, because, you know, it almost killed myself that, you know, when, when I stopped training, I shouldn't have, you know, stopped right, right away, you know, yeah. nothing, nothing. Yeah. That's I, hard. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's the biggest advice I have, but for you, for the UFC, you know, you know, th think big, uh, try to, you know, when they say sky is, sky is the limit, no, try to reach the moon. <laughs> Once you, you touch the moon, try to reach Mars. Or, or whatsoever, you know, uh, try to go further, go higher, try to go, uh, you know, because if you have the talent, if you have the desire, if you, if you, you know, it's not only in fighting, it's in life. So yeah. if you, if you want to, you know, like uh, one of my friends did, uh, she just start, started a podcast mm -hmm. and she never studied in communication. She's so good. Nice. So good. I said, why why didn't you work in radio station before? Uh, you know, it's so good. So, so the, it made me think about doing all my old stuff too, because you know, I, I never had the chance to, uh, to uh, even if I studied in in communication, I never had the, the chance to work for for television or radio stations. Mm -hmm. So, so why should I should I stop? I, you know, in my head, I you know, I was I was not good enough. Yeah. But no, that's not that's good enough. That, that's, it's simply because I, I don't fit in their system. So so why not opening my own stuff? You know, it's so free today. You know, you have your own post podcast, you, you do your own your own show. It's so so fun. So if you have the intention of going to the sky, you can touch the moon. <laughs> I like that. Very cool. I'm getting that on a t-shirt. Reach the sky, touch the moon. <laughs> I love it. Shout out to my man Jonathan Goulet, a, a hell of a guy. Uh, one of our original gangsters here in Canada, man. You led a lot of people uh, in the UFC and martial arts here. I love you lots, man, and you're dear to my heart here on the East Coast. And hopefully, we'll see you soon on your uh, on your uh, journey across Canada. Uh, if I uh, I go back on my walk, of course we will see each other. I'm going to East Coast. You know, that's funny because I have nothing against uh, West Coast, but uh, a lot of uh, my uh, my friend. They uh, they were saying that uh, once I did a road trip uh, last year with my daughter at uh, my 40th birthday I, I did uh, a road trip to Vancouver with her and uh, everybody was telling me that uh, you know uh, I was going to fall in love and not coming back in Quebec <laughs> but I, I never I never had the same you know feeling as when I went to the East Coast nice never wow. never never so so for me. My girlfriend, you know, she's uh, in the she's a military. She's in the army, and she will be retired in, at fifty one. So, uh, so on my walk, I might look for uh, for something to buy nice. over there. Nice, awesome. <laughs> well, we can help you, man. We can help you. All right, pal. Okay. Well, lots of love. We'll Thank you much very soon. There you have it, folks. Bye bye, um, bye. Jonathan Goulet, the Road Warrior. What a guy! Awesome, Evan. Very cool. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah, motivating That's story, you know, when you get to the top of the, you know, the fight game and then you get down like that and, you know, you want to take your own life. It's not easy. So yeah. it's cool. Cool to hear he's those. doing a cool cause and that's that's quite a journey he's going to be on man that's uh that sounds like i, I was going to ask him but uh like it sounds like he's kind of off-road eh like you see he's, he's oh, kind of yeah. going like yeah good, good, yeah good for him man at first i was thinking he's on like the highway but it's like he's he's in the woods and yeah. that's awesome coyotes one at a time yeah. all right buddy. well let's let's go to our final guest here um you know I'm almost speechless here. I got to be say I'm pretty excited here. We have Saf Safari from Tiger King. Um, quite speechless, in fact. Uh, super fan of this show and documentary for anybody who's watched it on Netflix. Uh, Tiger King. Um, this guy is, man, what an emotional story. Uh, but not only that, just kind of like all about perseverance. You know, to come in here, Evan, we're a fight 
league you know we we own a fight uh we're fight promotion i guess now we're doing podcasts because we can't do any events and you know to me that's the, all you look at fighters who fight and they come back and they're suspended they're hurt or whatever but you know he had his arm torn off and like a week later back on the job for the love yeah, of it was like five days or something like, unreal like i would i'd never go back i could never go back and it's an incredible story and super honored to have him join us so without further ado Sam Savory, hello. Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you? Thank you guys very much for having me. No, pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're in California, correct? I am, yes, sir. That's awesome. So, well, uh, thanks for the time distance. I know uh, you're connecting it with us here on the other side of the earth, so <laughs> it's appreciated. <laughs> yeah, that's well, a, Nova excited. Scotia. You ever think you'd be doing a podcast in Nova Scotia? I'm sure you've done a hell of a lot of different ones that. I have, I have, but not a Nova Scotia one, so I'm excited for this. One. Nice, <laughs> for cool. sure. Well, yeah, awesome. we're we're super excited to have you. So I I, I got to ask you know like for me, you know, you were a person that didn't want anything to really do with the whole hype of it all. You know, they asked you a few times to be involved in this. You said no, um, and it kind of to me that kind of shows why the you are the way you are. You're super humble. And you can tell that in all your interviews, you're very down to earth. That's why you're talking to us now. You're not above anybody. You're in, how has that kind of changed? It has it like, it hasn't changed you obviously, but how are you dealing with that? Right. Yeah. You know, uh, my, my biggest thing is at the heart of this all, I'm a, I'm a father first, I'm mm -hmm. a husband first. Um, and that's what I'm going to be for the rest of my life, regardless of the situation I'm in. Um, and that's what I try to keep at the very center, at the very heart of all this. So if it doesn't really affect that, I don't worry about it too much. And I think that's how I drive forward with everything. Um, it's it's just the only way I know how to be, you know? Very cool. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I guess you don't have a choice too, right? Like it's if, if you focus on all this other negative bullshit out there, it's what's the point, right? Like it, it's exactly like, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, everyone's always going to have an opinion. And um, I know more than anyone else that no one person is going to agree with every single thing another person has to say or feel, you know. Um, and this, I mean, I don't worry about that type of stuff. If I can't change it personally, then it just has to go to the back burner, you know. <laughs> you have a, you have, <laughs> that's, that's it. Do you have a name for the back burner? Or? <clears throat> back burner <laughs> that's, that's yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it hard. just has to wait back then i mean it either it either burns up or you know it it could be something awesome i never know i just know that what i have to focus on is what's always at the forefront of my day of, of every second of my day and i just live my life moment to moment day by day you know just yeah. that way three i kids. love being happy man three kids yes yeah. sir keeps you busy keeps you busy yeah i would say that's it's a whole different level of busy, you know, <laughs> and um, and especially now that I am being able to see the intricacies, the in and outs of being home with them all the time, because I never was. I was always working. Um, and now I, I kind of appreciate it more. <laughs> just that just the, the knowing the amount of responsibility that goes into it is incredible. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, that's oh, really be a, a huge difference for you, too. I guess now that you, oh, yeah. you you know, like there's a lot of changes in your life, I guess. And that would be the biggest yeah. one, really. Everything else in the background. Definitely, definitely. definitely. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of other people around the world going through the same thing. But for me personally, it was a firsthand look, like, like a reality check. You know, yeah. this is what you do, everything you do for anyway. So if you're not enjoying these moments, then what are you doing? You know, so yeah, that was definitely a an experience for me right off the bat throughout the COVID situation here in America or here in California, at least. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Yeah. It's it. I, I'm, I'm quite shocked. And I guess that that right there, how you answered that question again, goes back to the whole uh, the scenario in the actual documentary with the, the accident with your arm, um, how you handled it. Um, you know, is that something that's always been in you since being a young child? Like just that kind of get out of my way. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was very reckless as a child. So physically tough was easy, you know, because I got hurt a lot. Um, <laughs> and then the emotional mental aspect of it, I think was refined, um, by the military, but definitely birthed by my parents. You know, I had wonderful parents. Um, I lost them both very young. 
Oh, so wow. it, it's definitely something that my upbringing, my environment, you know, that type of dynamic um, <clears throat> attached to the military, my, my career in the military, and then just every experience thereafter definitely turned me into this, you know, stay grounded and just push through, you know, just keep on going, man, until you can't. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, by the way, thank you for your service. Um, obviously, you've been more right. down in the United States today. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, it is Memorial Day. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, you're just tough, I guess, plain and simple. You know, like it's people right. are built like that. You know, like I'm not built like that. And, you know, it's some people, like I, I said it earlier today to my girlfriend, like if I had been through that, like it, this would be a long, long thing, not just for me physically, but mentally. It's, it's so incredible and inspiring. That's for me. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Not, you know, there's lots of other bullshit and that you've done all these interviews talked about the same thing, you know, but to me, right. it's so inspiring how you've handled it and came out and, and just, you're just you, right? That's a yeah, no, I appreciate that. I really do. <clears throat> I don't think that, um, you know, obviously it wasn't about me, but I don't think the process of, of directly after this incident happened was highlighted enough. And, and yeah. not a lot of people, you know, ask those questions. Um, but I did struggle, you know, I mean, for at least a year after this incident, everything was new. You know, mm -hmm. things that I used to do two handed and not even consciously know that it's a two handed job. I'm starting to learn how to do it with one hand now, or I have to, or else yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. And I refused, you know, I refused to not be able to do something. So it was a, it was a long drawn out struggle, but I, I just kept pushing every day, you know, and that was my mentality behind of it. You're not going to live a life where you have to sit there and say, I can't do something if you have the ability to do it, you know, and it was even harder for me because I knew I could do it at some point in my life. Yeah. Up until that point, I was able to do all these things. And I just refused to live not being able to do it. So I just kept pushing. Yeah. Uh, it's a good way to be. Yeah. But yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a huge change, right? It's uh, when you're used oh, yeah. to it for X amount of years and then all of a sudden, you know, oh, yeah. you have to adapt and, and you know, start yeah. relearning right. some right. things as well. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, be, uh, you know, you tough. have to revert revert back to like childlike states, you know, because Whoa. as a as an adult, yeah. you're pretty set in your ways, you know. You you think you know how to do everything the best way that it can yeah. be done <laughs> at that point. And I I did that as well, and then you have to revert back to no, you can't do it like that anymore. This is the only way to do it. So let's learn it this way. Yeah. And that was difficult for me, you know. I think any any adult, especially an adult that's been through enough children and marriage and life they're like no man why should i relearn things i mastered it you know so yeah, yeah it was tough it was tough but yeah it, whew, yeah that would be so tough and not only that it happened in 2013 am i correct yes. so then all of this can you know like comes back seven years later everything that you've already been through right so now it brings up yes. those emotions too again right so oh, good for you like absolutely. i've seen you doing all these interviews and you handle yourself like an absolute boss so good for you it's awesome i appreciate that yeah, it's I really appreciate cool that. like i said you know at the end of the day i'm just you know a, a second before it aired on netflix i was just your neighbor you know yeah. i was just some guy you saw at the grocery store and I'm still that person, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think it's important to remain true to yourself regardless of what's happening in, in life, you know? Life changes all the time, man. So, yeah. Yeah, embrace it. For sure. I think from sure. like, you know, the show itself and like anything you've read and, you know, there's different, obviously different opinions and, and different comments and stuff like that. But I think everything that I've read um, has always kind of held you as, kind of the one that was there for all the right reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like you were, you could tell through that show and maybe they didn't show everything or, or versus right. as, as most you would have liked it to be, but uh, everyone, you know, kind of said you're, you're a true animal lover and were there for the right reasons, mm -hmm. or maybe some opinions went other ways on, on other individuals, right. which we don't have to go to, but I think that uh, says a lot about yourself. Um, and, you know, was there something in the show though that, you know, maybe, Maybe they didn't explain fully uh, from your point of view anyway, or maybe didn't, you wish they would have kind of, you know, went into it a little deeper. Oh yeah, definitely just the uh, the amount of care it took 
<clears throat> genuine one-on-one -on -one interactive care it took to tend to these animals because that at the end of the day is exactly what this industry is about yeah. you know it's it's what we're as a human race doing for these animals that's what it's about you know um and and it just it's a little sad that a, a documentary about one of the largest you know handlers of these big exotic cats one of the main you know names in this industry had almost two percent maybe two percent of animal care within that docuseries and wow. everything else was about and i understand they had one driven point but it's just it to me it was disappointing i'll be honest you know um but again that's not the story they wanted to tell and i hope at least with the amount of eyes that watch this docuseries somebody out there is willing to do that to highlight what it takes you know mm -hmm. i think that's important Absolutely. for sure yeah that's a lot what i thought like just watching it i was like there's going to be you know multiple sides to all of this but you oh, know yeah. tv is tv where they're going to just kind of highlight those right whatever's right. going to you know get their ratings or, or whatever mm -hmm. but uh it's very interesting and i yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's, that would have been oh sorry go ahead. Lot, sir. no i was just going to say that would have been you know awesome if they had just highlighted a little bit of animal care because it was what i did you know but again it wasn't about me it was about joe the industry and the and the journey you know mm -hmm. to how he went from this to that um but man it would have been a beautiful thing i think people would have enjoyed it because what we did on that park regardless of the opinions that people have um the animal interactions that we had on that park is definitely one in a million you won't find that anywhere else and it's because yeah. of the way we interacted with our animals you know so it's an easier story to tell if there's visual to go with it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, true. Did, I know you're busy at home, three kids, and uh, but are you still involved in in uh, you know anything to do with animals or, or you know whether that's big or small or right? Well, I mean, in the smallest sense, I, on a personal level, <clears throat> I visit I visit my friends who are here nearby. Um, so that I can continue to have those animal interactions. And that's just on a personal level. Um, and on a greater, grander scale, but still on a personal level, my next plan is to actually see these animals in the wild. Because I'd love to get, you know, that other take. Because, you know, for so long of my life, almost 10 years, I dedicated myself to these animals in captivity, thinking that that was what was best. Um, but I can't genuinely say this is what's best if I don't know what the other side is like. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to see them in the wild for sure. Yeah. That would be uh, quite an experience. I mean, what you did yeah, alone is something so. most people don't get to ever experience or never will. But I think seeing them right. in the wild as well would be, uh, you know, the flip side to that and, and just a cool overall experience. Right. Absolutely. Gratifying. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Would, if, you know, again, coming here from, you know, if I'm a fight promoter and you're, you're putting two people in a cage and, you know, like to me, I look at that and that's extremely terrifying. Getting in mm -hmm. the pen with the tiger is obviously, or like how does it, obviously you don't get in, but there are places that you are quite close to these animals. Like, was there, how do you learn that skill? I mean, obviously <clears throat> there are schools out there. And, and let me make it perfectly clear, I didn't go to any of them. I learned everything I knew about tigers on that part, aside from Google searches, you know. <clears throat> but um, I do know one thing, and this is pro probably why all the people in this industry are one type of person. Um, and it, it, you have to be absolutely fearless. You have to be. Because even though you know the dangers, you have to understand that there is literally nothing you can do to prevent it. You can't control a tiger. It's 600 pounds, yeah. you know, and you definitely will never take its natural predatory instincts away from it. So basically, you're taking a risk every single time. And if fear is on your head, on your heart, they will sense it. So you just have to be in a presence and that's it you know you're basically existing within their realm and you have to understand that or it's it's just not something that you can walk off the street and master you mm -hmm. know and i think that's why i was so intrigued by it all is because i was doing something that not just i wanted to do personally my entire life but something that not much others would even consider doing 
So it's it's definitely a, an ego thing behind it all, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's why you get the type of personalities out of it, you know. So yeah. it, what was like, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't typical of a normal job, right? But like, what was like week one when you showed up there? You're, you're first starting <laughs> off this job, like, you know, like most jobs, you maybe get a handbook or something, but I assume that wasn't probably the case at the, at the <laughs> park. Uh, so like, what was right. your first um, week or first month like uh, on the job? My first week was just amazing, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, if you can imagine thinking to do something your whole life and then finally having that Mm -hmm. transpire into real life, I mean, it was incredible, you know, and Joe was the key to that cage, you know, the key to that dream. Um, So it was that that was the dynamic, you know, is I was so thankful that I was able to do this. Nothing else mattered. Um, I just kind of buried myself in it you know it consumed me for so Mm -hmm. long um but you know after that week passes you think or you or you would imagine that that would that feeling would go away and it literally 10 years later never did you know you don't you don't make big life decisions like cutting off a limb for something that just faded away i mean this has been that exciting and that incredible every second of every day that I got to do it. Every wow. second. So, That's yeah. cool. How would yeah, it be? First, like, yeah. Yeah. Most people's jobs Good don't one. don't go that way. You know, they, they kind of dread going to work, but I assume you were excited uh, for each day of work, right? Because if you had that passion right. still fired up, then it's uh makes work a lot easier. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. It was a blessing. It was a blessing all the way around. You know, for sure. It was definitely a blessing all the way around. And uh, I never, I never took that for granted. And I think that's why it holds so true. Still, you know, that's why I'm still so passionate. Is because I never took it for granted. Now I did get hurt because I got complacent. Mm-hmm. But that's like a whole different thing. Yeah. You know, you do the same thing over and over and over sure. again. You think you're untouchable, and I think that definitely played into why I got hurt. You know, I forgot that I'm working with tigers. I mean, that it's plain and simple, you know. Um, But at the end of every day, I still love when you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life, right? Mm. And I didn't work for 10 years. Yeah, for 10 years. I was just enjoying life, man. And that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we got a question here for you. And then I'll have one more. And and then we'll, uh, we'll let you go. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, this is from the boys at the Ringside yeah. Report. Are you for or not? Are you for or not to free Joe Exotic? P.S. You are a cool cat. Did you hear? Yeah. Okay, so as far as as right as far as Joe goes, um, no, I would I wouldn't want to see that man die in prison. I mean, twenty two years that's a that's a lot of time. Yeah. You know, considering that no one died, that no one got hurt. You know. Um, Mm -hmm. When you only look at the animal aspect, you know, yeah, he broke a lot of rules and yeah, he needs to serve time for that, Um, but not 22 years. So I would, I would be elated if he got out, you know, Um, after he served his time for his crimes in in animal, in the animal industry. But as far as everything else that he's being charged with, it's, it's just ridiculous that there's absolutely nothing else kind of that, except this is what was said and now you're going to spend 22 years of your life in prison for it Mm. i believe fully in the justice system i always have um but i but i don't think that he deserves to be in there for that long Mm. now will i go out of my way to support something like that probably not will i go out of my way to make sure he stays in prison definitely not i just say my piece and let that be it yeah. You know, I've never participated in Joe's demise or in his in, in supporting him. I think that it's something that I continue and would love to continue remain neutral on. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, Evan. Like, I think that's why, you're, again, why I think everyone loves you. Like, because you're super classy. Like, you have nothing to, bad to say about anybody. Like, you're just a, you're what the world should be. I think it's incredibly rewarding it's just a i I don't know if that's a word i'm looking for but it's just it's easy you're an easy person to talk to and it's 
it's an incredible thing what you experience. One last question for you. Obviously, life is different for you now in a lot of ways. To you, you, you moved. You now work a different kind of job, a, a nine to five job. How is that every day? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, currently I'm not because California did shut down, oh, yes. and um, I'm sure they're gonna open up again here soon, but I'm not working any other type of job. Um, so thankfully I was financially, you know, ready for that or prepared for that. Okay. Okay. But you know, now obviously I have to think on a bigger scale. I can't just be like, yeah, I'm just going to go back to a nine to five job. Yeah. I was blessed with this platform and I definitely want to make good use of it, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, that's I, obviously I'm moving in that direction. I just, I'm not sure there's so many options and there's so many ways and I want to make sure I'm doing it properly and, and for the right reasons, you know? So taking my time with it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Cause I'm sure you probably have people from all over the woodwork going, Hey, like, listen, you know, come with me. I'll make a bobblehead or I'll do this or whatever, you know, like a hundred million different people right. with opportunities. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you have a manager now or are you looking at that? Right. Yeah, you know, I, I of course, man. I mean, any time that us as humans can connect on a level like that, and I think this this quarantine has done just that. You know, podcast and 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 you know, electronic video type of stuff. I mean, these Zoom meetings and all that. That's what's flourishing right now. That's the way that people are communicating, and that's mm -hmm. incredible. So I think if you can, if you can look at the times, you know and consider them when making your decisions. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm considering every option, you know, um, yes. and doing what's best for everyone involved, not just me and not just them. I think that's how everyone should kind of go into something, you know, that should be at the forefront of their mind whenever they're considering any type of relationship with anybody. Yeah. Is is this going to benefit both of us, you know, equally and and what else and who else? You know, mm -hmm. that's how I'm approaching it. Yes, it's it's been very interesting, and I love I love interacting with people. Um, I always have, you know, um, but I just want to make sure that it's not just talk. I mean, I I love to speak with a purpose, you yeah. know, and um, and I want to continue to be able to do so. so yeah, I, I'm not just talk, not just entertainment. You know, it's so much bigger than that, and and I want to highlight that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to hold you up. I think it's a, like what you said, it's, it's meaningful and it's, it has a purpose, like you said. So, so don't sell out. We love you here in Nova Scotia and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I, I have one last question right quick. Are you going to have any involvement with the movie they're going to make with Nicolas Cage? Oh, she probably can't. Can you talk about that? <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm honestly telling you guys, no one has contacted me. So um, I, I'm sure there's going to be a movie. I mean, I can only hope there's going to be a movie. But as of right now, no one's contacted me. So someone's slipping. No, <laughs> I don't know. I agree. I agree. You need to be the star there. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you have a big, bright future ahead of you and, and keep doing, keep motivating, keep being, being a great dad and, and a great role model in, in life. And, and thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor for us here in Nova Scotia to yeah. have you. And hopefully we'll see lots in the future. Awesome. There you Definitely. have it. Definitely. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys very much for having me. Awesome. Thank Talk you. Right, Take care. There you go, folks. Saf Safari uh, from Tiger King. Uh, pretty cool. Make sure you go out and check him out on Cameo and on all social media. You can get him on there. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool story, Evan. Yeah, really cool. And yeah, that's, I mean, it's true. It's kind of like everywhere, everywhere you read, you know, about Tiger King and after it came out and but she was always or he was always like you know the the kind of one put up there to just say that when in it for the right reasons and like a true animal lover and just yeah he did just, and you can tell right you know in that conversation alone that just they're really genuine and it's cool to see yeah it is cool to see it's, it's i really love that when people stay humble you know it's like i i don't know uh how everyone would react in that situation especially like that's what's interesting to me like he had that injury in 2013 now he's worked a nine to five job now this docuseries comes out in instant fame and wherever you worked you're like uh yeah how do i go back i'd like, be like what 
probably within the hour of the first, well, it was, I guess it was released all at the same time. So it's like, you know, within a day or so of that coming out, your life is like 360, oh. like drastically changed yeah it's 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 really cool uh, um that's why again why i wanted to talk to him is because i think it's pretty inspirational how it's all been dealt with and you know like overcoming an injury like that and, and just having a smile on your face it's i think it's a it's a pretty cool thing so i also did not know there was a nicholas cage movie coming out <sighs> cool. who, who would know that other than shout out to me <laughs> Uh, we still, by the way, uh, let's bring his face up there. This is my buddy, Matt Mansour here. Oh, females out there. Uh, he's single, ready to mingle if we got any females out there. Shout out to Matt Mansour, one of my good buddies. Uh, always entertaining. We got to get him on here. Uh, don't air beast. No, it's yeah. true. He's you're good. good. But, but yeah, good. that was interesting. It was good. Uh, good bunch of guests on today. So, yeah. as always i guess i mean you always have interesting people on yeah tomorrow night uh, another fantastic episode lined up we have uh chris Kalatis coming back on uh ufc and bellator veteran uh, now the m1 uh veteran who just was the champ there just lost the belt a uh, dear friend of mine and din thomas a uh, former ufc athlete uh, just left uh, american top team down in florida it's been on Dana White's can, looking for a fight, travels all over with Dana White and stuff. So those two will be on tomorrow night for the full hour and uh, chatting all kinds of fun and uh, bullshit pretty much. Awesome. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody have any questions? Any final questions? I know it's super interesting right now. <laughs> So interesting. I have no water left. Do you know what that means, Evan? You got no stickers left for the giveaways? No, no you're out. It went too fast. We, have, we do have some uh, gifts on the way here. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, we'll have some nice coupons from the Halifax uh, e-scooter. Uh, we'll also have some uh, nice pre-workout coffee from our friends at Team NBH Sport. Uh, we'll have uh, a few other things coming as well in the mix. So, yeah. Halifax e-scooters only do they just sell e-scooters or do they rent them also no no it's slick if you you've been to california you saw yeah is that what it's like the lime scooters kind of thing yeah, yeah. exactly so, so they rent them all around like uh halifax yeah so it's an app you download on your phone yeah. kind of thing and then you just get the scooter and then uh when you're when you pay i think it's uh i want to say it's 50 cents for the first five minutes or something and then 30 cents a minute or something maybe i don't know not maybe not even that much 10 cents a minute i don't know but basically you can cruise all around halifax i don't know one thing i don't know about it is if you have to return it back at the same location because you know as in other places you can just leave it anywhere yeah with that though it becomes a clusterfuck because they're all over the place people yeah. got them in their cars and shit. <laughs> big problem in california oh, for do. sure I remember Makes me laugh, but, uh, they are like they're the coolest idea and, and i mean like especially in halifax like who wants to walk from like water street up to like you know brunswick street or something you better have a damn it's, good uh, power to get some yeah you might you get maybe somebody on there that's a little bit bigger they might roll all the way back down the hill or something <laughs> i don't know if they have enough power to, <laughs> to roll up or not here's your scooter back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. could be uh any good brake system i guess for the other other I way down it works by your foot you you like kind of step on the on the brake it's really slick i gotta say and so shout out to those guys and yeah they're it, cool it's segway based right so you know it's it's pretty pretty simple concept but uh very smart so anyway folks that has it that has it whatever i gotta put some lip chap on here sponsored by chelsea young sitting on the couch <laughs> and laughing ha 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 Dave Simon says Samuel Adams time. Dave Simon, you know I got a bone to pick with you, Dave Simon of of uh, uh, the Ringside Report. You and I actually—he's from Montreal. This guy, Dave Simon Evan, he, uh, mm -hmm. the Ringside Report. These guys do a great show. It's like a podcast. They do a lot of wrestling and MMA stuff. They're actually hilarious. Dave Simon and I actually had dinner one time at the Picto Lodge, and I don't know if he remembers this or not. It was an ex-girlfriend of mine, and who knows if – I don't know if he's with the girl or not, if he's still married with her. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, long story short, um, we went to the Picto Lodge together. It was a fantastic dinner, and, uh, yeah, 
But I don't know. Shout out uh, to Dave Simon. Does he remember that, Anthony? Let me know if he does. Uh, Anthony says, ha, 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 ha. So I'll take that as a yes. He remembers. Yeah, sounds like he does. That's what I take it as. Especially with the extra HA at the end there. Keep it as plural. Plural. Yeah. All right, folks, we're talking gibberish, talking bullshit. Let's get out of here. Mom, I love you. Carol English, we love you also. Everyone at home, thanks for watching. Thanks to our sponsors. Tomorrow night we'll be back with another fantastic episode, episode 61. If you can be anything in this world, Evan English. Be kind, pal. All right, my man, we'll see you tomorrow, folks. And once again, thank you to our sponsors. Thank you.